Hello! In today's video, we're looking at debunking the gerund and so-called participle. The affix ing, which can be found on verbs, does not need complicated, not to mention misnamed, nomenclature as presented to us by prescriptive grammarians who will differentiate gerund, technically not relevant in English, as so-called present participle, the adverbial clause to indicate manner or purpose, as a verb complement, etc. Because in all cases we can say that ing simply serves one as emphasis on the action and two as concision or simplification. So these are all listed in the ebook in different files and you can search for more detail. Consider swimming does me good. It's concise and simpler than saying the activity that is swimming is a healthy pastime for me and we also avoid using the verb to be. So it's basically ellipsis. Then there is the use of a possessive determiner to simplify syntax. Consider my practicing English will mean my improving more rapidly. Though we might argue it's a more complex syntax, it's nevertheless easier than saying the effort XYZ I put into English practice will mean a rapid progress or improvement. Where my quite simply expresses following the manner in which I do ABC and XYZ. Simplification occurs with concepts that involve the intellect, as with preference verbs, enjoy, like, love, prefer, etc. I enjoy spending time swimming. My favorite activity is swimming. Moreover, when a verb functions as an adjective, it is referred to as an attributive modifier or verbal or participial adjective, as in, I saw a burning bush, as opposed to I saw a bush burning, of which the latter is a simplification of I saw a bush that was burning. So we're using again ellipsis to make things more simple and concise. Labeling things for the sake of it misses the point of how we wish to communicate. It also makes things more complicated and distracting for learners to know all this terminology. Now, these are just deterrents. And we're using only one side of the brain, which is this logic side. Why not just acknowledge that the ing is an affix? In each case, In each case it serves to shift the focus to the action. She is running does not mean that the subject is running now or around now, nor in the future or even intermittently or exceptionally, without knowing or without the, the narrator verbalizing the time context. I left the room slamming the door behind me. This formulation saves us using a conjunction and emphasizes the slam or maybe the noise. Emphasizes the, the emotion as well, so ing um, always includes emotion, something that is not in the grammar books. If the narrator had said he left the room and slammed the door behind him, this plainly indicates two actions. And so the ing adds the emotion, like I said, it could be frustration or anger or an attitude, impudence, <laughs> impatience, etc. She studied for the exam, hoping to pass, highlights the hope the subject has in her success and effort. 
What follows is taken with permission by Rob Mitchell from one of his many edifying posts in LinkedIn. Derivation is a linguistics term to describe a lexical item that is converted to another. We can turn white into a verb by adding en, whiten, or to form an adjective from a noun, we add y or an affix ed. In modern Latin languages, the affix ndo has become an active verbal nominal. The Dutch language, you have brecken, brekkend, brekking, and the resultative gebrocken, which, by the way, is misnamed even in Latin as a past participle. In all four cases above, they are not verbs, but nominals. They came to be called verbs through misanalysis. By listing verbs in English, Dutch, German, etc., as they were Latin verbs, and therefore falling into the trap of assuming uh, something like is breaking is actually a verb form, which it isn't. The verb be is a verb, and breaking is an active nominal. In this specific construction, it is a prepositionless prepositional phrase. The original preposition being on, which had an unstressed version, hit is on breaking, hit is on breaking, or hit is a breaking, which became it is a breaking. You may recognize uh, this a. Uh. In American folk songs and also in uh, British West Country dialects. The term pa uh, present participle is also inaccurate labeling and at times misused. In, for example, he is running, running being strictly speaking a gerund. Present is a flawed term since we can use it in any past, present or future time frame. And participle isn't a participle, but actually a fully functioning word. Explanation, again by Rod Mitchell, of the inconsistencies and in inaccuracies of traditional grammar terminology that still linger in today's curricula. Gerundium. Strictly speaking, English doesn't have a gerund. The simple fact that Latin has a gerundium does not mean that every other language must have a gerund. The use of the term gerund was to refer to a characteristic of English and the other Germanic languages. They used the term because they were not able to do linguistic analysis in the modern sense. The gerundium in Latin ended in ndo and had specific meaning, that of that which is to be carried out. Amandus, amandum, amanda. That which is to be loved, liked, or be an obligation to. In modern Latin languages, the endo has become an active verbal nominal. The second is semantically much the same as Latin with the affix nt, the active nominal, but was called gerund because of the uh, nd. And so another misnaming. The third is semantically similar to both Latin infinitive and the Latin active, while the last is the resultative, miscalled in Latin past participle. They are not verbs, but nominals. They came to be called verbs through misanalysis, as we've said. 
So in part three, Rod goes on to mention the evolution in English. During the Middle English period, E-N-D endings and I-N-G endings um, started to fall together, helped by the fact that they largely meant the same thing. The syntactic difference being ing words were verbal nouns and E-N-D words could be either verbal or uh, nouns or adjectives. So brekkend became breaking, and the closeness in sound to breaking meant that they could do nothing but become one word, covering what were two slightly different uses. What next happened was the choice of ing for formal English and in a less formal one. At the same time, Latin-based prescriptive grammar was developing and gerund got collar to refer to noun uses, even though this is a misuse of the Latin term and present participle was used to refer to adjectival and prepositional phrase uses. As analytical linguists delve deeper, the inconsistency and stupidity even of making what amounts to an artificial difference became too obvious. The term ing form refers to meaning and form, gerund and participle. For those who want to insist are purely syntactic terms and are at times used wrongly. Participle is from the Latin participium, sharing, partaking, participation. The nominal shares the meaning with a verb stem. In turn, a translation from the ancient Greek metoke or participation. These words are not verbs, they are nominals derived from stem verb stems. This is how you typically see uh, these in textbooks. Viento viene, el viento se va por la frontera.